What's going on YouTube? My name's Eric Young. Welcome back to another exciting tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at using RealFlow and Element 3D and combining those two into making an animation like this with a 3D logo. I'm going to make four tutorials using RealFlow and Element 3D, showing various different ways that you can use it. So yeah, let's just get started. So to make a 3D logo, I will include this guy's tutorial in the description. It's a great tutorial and 3 minutes and 50 seconds he'll show you how to convert a 2D logo into a 3D logo inside of Element 3D. And so to save time, I already have a 3D logo here. And to import it into RealFlow, which by the way I need to talk about real quick, um, RealFlow is a really tedious program you're going it's a simulation program so you're going to have to simulate and to get best results this wouldn't even be best results this was just the best I could do was you would you would need to mess with the settings as much as possible until you get the right look of what you want and the right kind of water and all that and then when you add motion blur in an element 3d it all looks flowy but you can still see it's kind of choppy so even then it's not as good as it could be and this took me a week to make um, about five days to render two days to work on and yeah so this is going to be the last tutorial is how to make this animation but today we're just going to be sticking it simple with this so let's get started use uh, the cinema 4d plugin for RealFlow, which I'll include in the description. It's free. The uh, RealFlow program is not free, but I will also include links in the description of how to get 10 and 5 for free. I'm using 10 right now for this tutorial. Previously I made that animation that I showed you in the beginning in RealFlow 5, but we'll be making this in RealFlow 10 because it's a lot faster. Also some things about RealFlow, sorry to carry on. It's a heavy CPU intensive program it's also a very heavy RAM intensive program I only have 16 gigabytes of, of RAM and a i5 6600 3.6 gigahertz it's actually pretty good so let's get started go to plugins real flow real flow SD exporter and for this we'll just do 90 frames because that's three seconds and we'll click add all and we'll choose a file location click Save click export and then we'll go to RealFlow, make a new project, call it logo and then we'll go to import object and find that file. So first thing you want to do is add gravity. Gravity will automatically be set to 9.8 which is normal and we're gonna leave it at that for this project and then we're gonna make a sphere. The camera settings are one, two, three, four. Select that. Press E to move it, or W to move it. I'm, my bad. W to move. E to rotate, and R to scale. So we'll drag this up. So what we're going to be doing is dragging this across the logo. So we'll go to the top view. Press three. Set a position key. Set a position keyframe. Drag it back, move forward. We'll do a faster one. We'll just do one second since it's only a three second animation. Then click position. And to make it stop pouring, as soon as it hits that spot, what we'll do is we'll go down to the emitter. We'll find max particles and we'll set a keyframe. Then we'll move to 31. Max particles, zero. I don't know why that's negative. Shouldn't be negative. So it goes from a positive number to zero. And so we'll go over these settings real quick before we hit simulate, because if we click simulate, it will now start simulating particles. So that's a pretty good idea for what we'll get. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll make a particle mesh and it automatically bound to the circle met, uh, meter, emitter and we can do some mesh options so we'll add some filters I 
I usually do dilate, erode, smooth, and then dilate it again just because you have to mess with them quite a bit till you get some jagged ed edges. And then we'll click Mesh Interactive. And what that will do is we'll now be able to see the mesh. We can also change the view right up here in Scene Shading. Flat sh Shaded. Shaded. There we go. So next thing we need to do is make this look like water with the settings. One thing we can do is mess with the density and viscosity. I usually like to do one viscosity for water. Some people say three is good, but uh, looks more like slime to me. So I do one and density usually leave the same. Sometimes I do it a bit higher if I want it to fall a bit more densely if that makes any sense and if you want to you can always just hover over these and press F1 and it will tell you exactly what this does in very long descriptive detail. So I've noticed also a lower density usually looks good for water so I'm gonna do 50 for the density and let's mess with the mesh settings. So. The dilate will change the scale of it as you solve it. The erode will erode it sometimes to nothing. And so to have erosion, we need to have dilation. So the best settings I found were dilate 1.7, erode 2, smooth 1, dilate 0.1. And that left me with these sort of particles. So now if we simulate it again, and it's going to take longer because it's rendering the mesh and all these filters now. One thing I almost forgot to do since we've already rendered this much is make sure you go into the export settings go to export central down here where it says particle mesh we want to do a bin export not a ABC export so we'll re-export this and when it's done we'll import it into cinema 4d and then from there we'll go straight into element 3d Okay, so our simulation is finished and went to 92 frames because I didn't set the last frame. So there we go. Now it's set to 90 frames. So now to export it, we'll just go into Cinema 4D with our project open. And then we'll go to Plugins, Real Flow, Real Flow Mesh Importer. Then we'll go to Scenes. Then we'll go to our project, Meshes, and select the first bin file. Now if we play it forward, we'll see the meshes there. So now we'll just make a material for that and rename this to water. Now shift click the two, right click, group objects, and then make a file to save it in. And then go to Steady Bake, which I will also include in the description, and I've used a lot in my tutorials. And click the RXV 1.4 button, and then find that place you made to save it. Then click File Series, click Draw, click Use Textures, and click OK. Now that it's exported, we'll go into After Effects, make a new composition, 1080p with 30 frames per second. Make the comp three seconds long. We'll call it Logo Comp. Layer, Solid, Element 3D. Add the Element plugin. Go into Scene Setup. File, Import, 3 Sequence, not Object. And then the same thing, just import the first one, not the zero, zero. Here it is. As, as we scrub through, you can see it. So we'll go ahead and set the scene up. Just make a group null for the logo. Make a camera. I like to use 35 millimeter. And I'm just gonna crop that out because basically what I did in the other animation I showed at the beginning was keyframed a pipe from element 3D and followed it using a different group null. So now if we go into scene setup, we can add some textures. 
So we'll just do some metal texture for the logo. There, we'll just make it gold. I think that's what I used in the last one. And I also have this SND bad. Not really sure where I got it. internet for free. Maybe I paid a few bucks for it. If I find it, I'll include a link in the description. But it's got some great water textures. So if we play this forward, we can get an idea of what it will look like water-wise. Some other good water textures I found from Pro Shaders were not in Pro Shaders 2, but Pro Shaders 1 translucent. Or chlorine. I think that's what I used in the one I showed you. Pool is also another good one from the sort of ripply water and tide. But the SND shaders are just much better. And then click the water texture that you chose. Go down and change the opacity. And then from there it's just lighting and setting up your scene. 20 minutes later. So the next thing we'll do is just go ahead and make a adjustment layer and do motion blur and add pixel motion blur. We'll also go into element 3D and add ambient occlusion in the render settings. So pixel motion blur will add a good amount of motion blur. But if you want more motion blur and a much longer rendering time, but it's also kind of worth it in my opinion, is to add CC force motion blur underneath pixel motion blur. And that will create just a little bit more blur. I'm gonna add some color correction and render this. Thanks for watching this tutorial guys. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe. Thanks to everyone that's been subscribing and I'll see you next time with my next real flow tutorial.